Hey guys, my name is Paul Graham, and uh, today I will be talking about Split Infinity. Now, it's backwards now because I'm using, you know, the camera and it's not like auto reverse or anything. But if you could kind of read backwards, it's uh, Split Infinity, and it's by uh, Piers Anthony. I really like his books, it's just great books. It's uh, very intelligent writing, so it's not recommended for somebody who's having a rough time getting through books. It's it's fast paced, but it's um it uses more complicated words and complicated style of writing. Um so it's the first book of uh the Apprentice Adept series, which is I believe a seven book series, and it's great. Um so it really follows style as he travels through the world of phase and also deals with the world of Proton. So these are two parallel worlds and uh the very, they are similar in many ways, but also kind of opposite in many ways. Um, so Proton, which is his origin planet, it, uh, it is a science world, so it is very far advanced, and it's based off of, uh, this place called, or this, uh, metal or substance material called Protonite, and it is filled with energy, and it's super dense, and it's just very, very, very valuable. So, um, but when they move there, these are all like science people, so it's kind of showing how people kind of get corrupt over time, and, uh, it, it's a barren wasteland. They have these things, like, called domes over, like, buildings, ballerina style, um, and it, uh, kind of, and it keeps in the air, and it keeps in the atmosphere, and, you know, it can simulate many things, like, if you want, but outside, you can't live out there, it's just not able to happen. Um, so he is a very short guy. He's, uh, I believe he's very, sh he's just very short. So he's a uh, jockey in his world because he is a surf. Now, if you remember surfs, surfs from last year when we did it in, uh, social studies with Mrs. Tesh, uh, they were pretty much servants. They didn't have any property. They didn't own anything. They were property of the people of like the Lords and all that. So the lords in this are kind of, uh, the citizens. They're called citizens. Um, technically the serfs aren't be, are being paid. They are allowed for a 20 year cycle called a tenure. And you are only allowed on, uh, Proton as a serf for 20 years. And, uh, you spend a long, it's just, uh, but it is, it can be tedious, but it's also very nice there because it has many appealing aspects as well. Um, Mostly for style, it's the game, and this game, it's really, it's really big and complicated. Uh, so it is provided by the citizens who are like infinitely rich almost, or at least it seems so at the beginning. Um, it's just crazy. So pretty much it has this grid, and this grid is used to define what you're actually doing in able to play the game because this game is made up of millions of different games like there's chess and there's I don't know riddles and there's just tag even something as simple as tag and it's just crazy um you it's just absolutely crazy so since they're a very like f a science-based planet they uh, have many computers and many other things similar um, and it is just crazy. It's kind of placed in the future, you know? It's not exactly where we are in our technology at all. They're way ahead of us. But, uh, yeah, it's very, it's very advanced. Um, so they have all these robots to help them, and they have computers, and there's this thing called the game computer, which helps with the game. And it is just crazy. It has so many, it's just really smart. It has, like, everything, and it is able to, uh, do this. Now, he's a master at this game. He is very, very good. So, uh, what... He is kind of, uh... It's not... He is originally a jockey, right? And he's a very good jockey. He's very good with horses. He's a very good rider. He's the best on Proton. Maybe even in phases. Yeah, in phase as well. He's just the best with horses. He's very, very, very good. But this also makes him very valuable. Because citizens... I mean, they have a bunch of money, so, I mean, they don't really need any of this stuff. They do it for entertainment, and because gambling is fun. 
So he's working with uh on with a citizen and he gets a lot of privileges from this citizen um because he's a very good jockey. So he's using this horse and he's it's a very tough horse and then when he's riding one day he just gets shot in the uh thigh or the, no the knee and it is so he can't really it just doesn't really let him he can't proceed unless he has so he loses that race, and he can't proceed unless he has surgery. But earlier he met Sheen, which is from Ma Sheen. She is a robot, and she is very, very complicated robot. She's, like, probably the most complicated model out of all of them. So, um, she's a very good robot. And, uh, she ten she, her prime directive is what she has to do, is she has to protect him. And her sub-directive is to love him as much as a robot possibly could. Now, one of these, is, the thing in this story is he tends to, uh, it's very kind of based on perspectives. Because to most people, machines don't matter. They are simply what you would consider a couch. Well, some people consider couches more than, you know. Um, uh, <laughs> but, uh, they use, um, these machines for a bunch of things, but they don't really consider them people, they don't consider them anything, even though some of these peop, some of these machines are almost as complicated as people. I mean, they can never, they haven't reached that stage yet where they are people, but they're getting very close. And, uh, so, once he learns that she's a robot, he kind of, uh, Draws back, because, I mean, it's based in their society that robots aren't people. But this girl is perfect for him. She was made to be perfect for him. And, uh, it was just, yeah, she was sent to protect him. And he doesn't know why. So that is one of the subplots to the story. Why did they send me Sheen? So when he, she doesn't let him get the surgery, because she thinks that surgery will, uh, make him in pain. And he's like, oh, okay, then I... I won't do it, because he's worried that he will die if he does this, because somebody's after him, you know? And, uh, whew, sorry, it's getting pretty long here. Um, there's, no, when he's hiding, because these citizens are like, you have to do this, because if not, we will kill you. And so he's just, whoa, he's absolutely sketched out. He just met this girl, robot thing. And he's running away from citizens now, and he's had a great life until then. It's just, it's weird. And, um, so, he he ends up going into this food complex where he sees people coming in and out of appearance, seeming to disappear, and he's like, oh, I must be blinking. But after seeing it a few times, he gets really confused. So, he sees a fake Sheen come to get him, because she had left to get them off his trail. And, oh, so they start fighting, and, uh, so he runs away in the end, because there's, like, a bunch of robots coming to find him now that they knew where he was, and, uh, so he sees this shimmer, and he just says, he, he, at this time, he figures it's a matter, uh, transfer, you know, like how, uh, you would, like, pretty much a teleportation device, so he runs towards it thinking he's gonna be teleported, and in a way he was, but it was across dimensions instead. See, as I said before, these um, two worlds were one world, and they are very similar in all ways, because they are one world. They're similar in geography and even some events. So um, these worlds are the same, and uh, that's actually where the third uh, book title comes from, which is Juxtaposition, which is actually one of our words that we've learned in the film. Um, so these were side by side. Which is, you know, what juxtaposition is. <sighs> so, now, the phase world, which is the opposite of proton, which is science, is magic. You know? Like, magic, and it's just, ugh. There's many forms of magic. I mean, each person knows how to do one form of magic. So, Style, the main character, he uh, knows riddles and song magic. Now, he learns that, uh, you can only, you can only cross if, uh, cross the curtain, which is what the little 
thing is called. Um, you can only cross the curtain if your other person's dead. So he wants to know who murdered his other f person. So he learns that he is good with magic, and he meets this unicorn. I know, right? A unicorn. And uh, so he has to ri He tries to ride this unicorn, but unicorns in this are very, very smart. They're probably smarter than humans in some way. Uh, they're very arrogant as well. So, because of this arrogance, they don't, he doesn't, nobody's written a unicorn. Nobody has written a unicorn. So, after almost, after almost beating her, she decides she was going to jump off a cliff and turn into a, because they can transform, so they could turn into a human and then into a, um, a bird of some sort. Well, that's what most people do, but you could choose any form. But, um... So she was going to turn into a hummingbird, but she, he thought that he, it was a, she was so prideful that he was gonna, she was going to kill herself rather than let him ride. So he gets off, which proves to um, her that he would be a good friend. So now they're friends, and uh, she helps him do this by taking him to the Oracle, where he is uh, put there. And, yeah... But the reason, I think I skipped over this, but um, the reason why uh, he thought somebody was killing him there as well is because of, first of all, because of the juxtaposition, so things are similar between the frames, and also because when he first got there, he met a man who kind of explained how it was working, how there's magic and all that. So he puts on an amulet and it invokes it, and it grows and starts to kill him. So this amulet was supposed to clothe him, but it turns into a giant demon and starts to strangle him with the chain that he put on his neck because it's like a necklace, you know? So he was able to knock the demon off, and he was able to get away from that, but he was sketched out after this. He just didn't know what to do. He was in a foreign place. He didn't know how to get back because it's the only way to get back. To get to phase, you have to will yourself through. To get back from phase into proton, you have to use magic, and he doesn't know how to use magic yet. So, um, he kind of figures his magic out along the way, and the main plot is to figure out who killed him. He also meets a werewolf along the way, and his bond with, uh, Nesa, the, uh, unicorn, grows a lot. And at one point, they were even kind of romantic interests, you know? But they knew it was never to be, because unicorn and humans just didn't mix. And, um, he ends up meeting just many people, and, uh, he's a very smart man, and he just, once he learns how to use magic, the unicorn and the, uh, Nesa, and the werewolf, it's a weird name, it's like Kyogre, or something, and it's, it's really, they both threaten to kill him if he uses magic, because he has strong magic, and they don't want to die, you know, and power corrupts, and they're worried. Because they can't use magic of their own, except for transformations, you know? And they're really worried about that, so... <sighs> it's very complicated. Um, the games. I'm gonna talk a little bit more of the games. So, in the other world, because Sheen can't pass since she's not alive, he, um, he, he likes Sheen a lot. As a romantic interest, but it's more of an affair, you know? He doesn't actually love her, but he, he loves her in a different way. So, he plays the game, and because the only way for him to survive is to enter the tourney, which is, like, where all the big people go to, um, win the tourney. Like, all the big gamers, you know, and, oh, it's just crazy, because there are very many people, like, even citizens can enter, and aliens, and, uh, so he plays through that, plays many different games during this book, um... So he enters the tourney. He doesn't finish the tourney. The tourney hasn't ended by the end of this book, but uh, but um, he gets pretty far into it, and oh, he's very, very, it's very hard for him. He's a uh, because he's a master. He's very good, but th almost the main game is to figure out what game you play with, which is with the grid, and you know. You can never tell for sure what the other person's about. And because he's also in phase, he hasn't time to steady. And it's just very complicated for him. So, he... Um, the winning... If you win, you become a citizen. And that is, like, you know, immense wealth. So, everybody wants to become a citizen. I mean, why wouldn't you want money? It'd, it'd be better than winning a lottery. Because you get one kilogram of protonite. 
and each gram is enough to pay for 20 years of surf labor, which is crazy. Like, seriously. It's just absolutely crazy. Um, it, it's just, they're very rich. And you can increase that fortune by gambling, but I'm not gonna, gonna get into that. And, uh, ooh. So, he just plays many different games. He plays riddles, and he plays math riddles, and he plays horseback riding at one point, and he runs, and he... Uh, it's just crazy. So, um, it's running a bit long now. I would definitely recommend this book and other of, of his works. I also read, um, uh, another of his series called The Incarnations of Immortality, which is kind of based off of, you know, the horseman, just kind of incarnations like death and war and fate and God and Satan and how they are people actual, like, humans who took up an office instead of them being almighty beings, even though they do have very magical powers. But I'm not talking about that. Uh, this is a great book. As you can see, there's Nesa, the unicorn. She, uh, she's also called a misfit, actually, like style, because he's short. Um, she's also called a misfit because unicorns are usually weird colors, like red. You don't really see a red unicorn. But, uh, she's black, which is a horse color, so it's, like, defective. It's, like, kind of a racism type thing. It's it's kind of sad because she's a beautiful unicorn in the thing and it's he always is like, "What? She's a perfect unicorn. There's nothing wrong with her." So that's actually also what kind of um adds to the effect of style being good with uh being friends with Nesa because they're both outcasts. Um so that is all for today. I would definitely recommend reading this. Uh as I said before, it is a very um tough book. It's a tougher book to read, and if you do read it, you you just kind of have to stick through it, and uh, some people might not like it. Um, I say it's a very interesting thing, and I would uh, definitely recommend just Pierce Anthony in general. I've really enjoyed his book so far, and uh, goodbye!